Hi guys, welcome back to the letter. Last time, I'm pretty sure I got Zack killed. I'm I'm not upset about it. No, what would ever make you think that? I'm not upset. Anyways, I was looking at that memory fragment, which I thought would be like a scene, but it isn't. It's just CG. So this whole time, I've been operating under the assumption that the ghost, the scary ghost, or ghoul, or whatever you want to call her, was the Lady of the Manor. But I don't think she is. The Lady of the Manor is like this blonde chick who was sitting in the back, sitting, having a cup of tea, watching the real ghost getting... I can't say that word. Also, I, I got this really weird feeling because I checked it out and it looks like there's um, nine slots, nine memory fragments to unlock. And where is it? Oh yeah, wait, no, I was I was in the right place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, never mind, I was wrong. But anyways, uh, we'll figure out the mystery of that later. But for now, let's take a look at Marianne's kind of strange apartment. I mean, look at the poster back there. If that's actually Marianne, I swear to God. But anyway, 7.15 p.m. The numbers are so little on top of my screen, and they glare at me with such intensity that I can hear, just hear their accusations. I'm late for a night out with the girls, yes, but I have a perfectly good excuse, jeez. Considering I don't follow typical office hours, they really can't expect me to be able to just come and go as I please at 5.30 on the dot. The client is, first and foremost, my priority. I have to sit tight when my personal assistant, Chris, tells me we have a big one coming up, and I shouldn't miss this one. He knows a lot more on the who's who and the what's what when it comes to these soci socialites, and I trust that judgment call. I really don't have time for rich people and their drama and their politics. These sort who were born with silver spoons in their mouths who were used to wagging their silver tongues about. I let him handle the negotiating with them for the most part. Why else would I have hired him? But he told me I'd receive a message about it an hour ago. Now, if only he has the full shilling when it comes to the time. Come on, I have a social life too, you know? To an extent. Sort of. Pressing my head against the table, I try to save off an oncoming headache when the notification for a new email pops up. All I'm expecting is a, hey, this looks like a really good project they found. Go send them a sign, or something like that, really. And that's often how it goes. Even with these rich, jammy clients who's heard of me off from their equally rich, jammy friends, I can't expect them to hire me right off the bat. Which is all well and good and reasonable. We figure out what they want, send them my portfolio, my drafts are the projects, my rates, and hope for the best. This is a big client, Marianne. I'll babysit Bruthiel for you. P just please take this one project. I promise this person is huge in Luxborn. Mr. Parker, this is a formal request to secure the services of Marianne Mikala, here and after called the designer. As authorized by Hannah Wright, here and after called the client for interior design work at Ermingon Mansion, Luxborn, LX18, ORF, United Kingdom. The client hopes to receive, have the designer there on 21st October Friday with the time pending. But as I open the mail and I seem to have been requested by this client specifically, well, I certainly didn't expect that, and it's pretty straightforward too. Anyone else would probably be excited. They would be working with the Hannah Wright. She's just one of those rich socialites that everyone loves to talk about, no matter how hard I try to tune out such nonsense. It would have been enough for me to reply in an affirmative to Chris and leave, but he's never pleaded for me to take a project before. We've worked with big personalities in the past. Celebrities, bankers, even a few politicians. My PA has been indifferent about those. Though the question bounced around my skull before I spy one of those email attachments. A newspaper clipping from the Luxborn Daily Business News section boasting the headline, Wright Enterprise Donates $2.5 to Refuge. It certainly qu caused quite a stir back then. Apparently they had invited business businessmen and socialites everywhere, and the guise of it being some sort of business announcement. Two and a half mil and an expensive looking party to boot. These people sure know how to throw their money around. Not that I should be so callous. They're going to do a lot of good and help a community with those with all those pounds. I, of all, should be, of all people, shouldn't criticize such acts whether they were for show or not. At the very least, I know they'll be able to pay my rates. 
With the headline out of the way, however, I find myself staring at the picture that came along with the clipping. Because, wow. Here I am, expecting a sour old woman in a blazer and a skirt. But the woman that was plastered on the front page looks like she belongs on the front page of an entertainment section, or even, if I am to be crass, as the pinup for a glamour. Okay, I'll be real here, a men's magazine. She sure, knows how to, she sure knows how to rock the dress. Wait. Her hair, her eye, her lips. She can't be her. And at the same time, she is her, only several years older. She looks just like... No, come on, Mac. The world's full of pretty blondes. It's just a coincidence. Do you recognize Hannah? With a shake of my head, I snap out of it and reach for my phone when it buzzes, nearly falling off my chair in the process. Who else would be on the other line but the very people waiting for me? Oh, piss. I'm so sorry, Calm. I'm on my way. That's what I say. Yet I still don't move from my chair, face flushed. Face flushed and heart racing. I can only stare until I will myself to reply that yes, I'm accepting the harassment. Assignment. <laughs> <laughs> I've never fucked up that badly. And it takes even more time for me to close the image, shut down the computer, and leave. Even then, it's already burned its image into my head, no matter how much I wish it would just disappear. It makes me eager for the alcohol in the company. It makes me eager for anything that help can help me forget. It's a good thing that the nearest pub is just a hop, skip, and a jump from here. Ah, Mr. Man, working the night shift. I see. The Galloway Shawl, as it is called by those who frequented the place, is the only decent Irish pub in the country. County. You can pretty much tell that someone is new if they call it by its official name, The Call Bar. My home away from home ever since I moved to Luxbourne. Well, that is when I'm not cooped up in my condo and working away. It has good alcohol, good company, and thank God and Saint Cecilia, good music. Crowd favorites like the Bothy Noise, the High Weight West... Wesleyan Man and Second Fusion or Orchestra often played. Not to mention the singing. I love singing. Anyone could just break out into a drinking song and the others in the plug were just wonderful that they'd start singing along. And doing so while intoxicated is the best of ways to go about it. Hey, it's a win-win as long as I don't puke in the middle of the chorus and as long as I can get home in one piece at the end of the day. And tonight is karaoke night. What better time to try to sing all my worries away? That's what my intoxicated brain tells me. The ghost of guilt and sorrow remembers who I am. And in the prison of my heart, I was my only slave. But drinking only reminds me of my home. And the thought of home makes me think of her. But in the depths of my cold soul, I'll leave the burden and despair. It makes me nauseous. It sickens me that the smallest reminder of her can cause me such grief. I'll fight for what's worth fighting for. Forget the fear, forget the rest. Who voices Marianne? Because she's a really good voice. Of course, that might just be the booze. Any other day I would have scolded myself for drinking so much. I lied to the Lord, I lied to myself, I lied to you and everyone I care, until there were no more lies to tell. But I already have a client, and we'll be having a first little meet and greet in a few days. Cowardice is easier than being brave, but alas, I found strength I lost to sing my love letter to you cause people can lie but my lone heart beats true wait was that the theme song of the game I want to at least enjoy this night get over the hangover tomorrow and return to being a prim and proper professional after that song was for Cam our lucky bride to be so give her a hand, Galway Shawl! Considering the state I'm in, I, one, ex one can excuse my smug grin as cheers and applies ra rise among the pub's patrons. Because, possibly off-key public singing aside, I feel like I'm on top of the world right now, and that's a good reason as any to belt out in front of these strangers. 
With good drinks and good friends, there's nowhere else I'd rather be tonight. And I forget for a short while. And that song was brought to you by Marianne McCullough, everyone! A round of applause! That was so good! You rock, Marianne. Oh, please stop! <laughs> You're just saying that! You know neither of us can hold a tune, Marianne. A toast to our shameless drunk singer. May your drinks forever flow and your notes be ever lovely. If anyone deserves a toast tonight, that's Cam. Finally sealed the deal after three years, eh? Read them and wait, bitches. Cam, I like you. Kamala's diamond engagement ring gleams as she holds it up for all the world to see. She has reasons to be proud. Three years of living together and her boyfriend finally asked her the big question. Obviously, she said yes. Don't get too attached to that ring or the one after, sweetie. I was wearing a wedding ring not so long ago and look at where I am. But enough of me being a downer. Cheers to a happy engagement! Of course, if something like Haruna's divorce were to happen, I'd be there for Cam. Just as Cam had been there for me, acting more than just my yoga instructor, I can't be happier for my friend right now. Cheers! 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 Well, we'll both be there for Cam, won't we? Haruna and I? Haruna, it's been a real bad year for her ever since their divorce. She's such a nice person, even loaning me money to open a studio, and she didn't deserve what her husband had pulled. I'm happy she's smiling again and picking out like she used to. I think we've all missed our Japanese firecracker. We met in yoga class, something I joined to keep myself in shape and, well, honestly so that I could make new friends when I moved to Luxborn. Clearly, it worked like a charm. And it definitely did have anything to do with the fact that I brought along my lucky d20 die with me on that first day, no sir. Marianne, are you a nerd? I love these girls so much. What about you, Marianne? You're 30 years old and you still haven't got yourself a man. And you guys know I have a very busy schedule. I don't have time for that. Oh, come on. That's a lame excuse and you know it. You need a man who'll take care of you and you need it now. Maybe some hunk will be your house hubby while you rake in the dough. I'm quite capable of taking care of myself. Who needs a Mr. Right? Hey, look at me, I'm Marion McCullough, a lawful neutral cleric with nine points in wisdom and eight in charisma, but I can't get myself a date. She is a nerd. Yes! I mentioned druids and demons once. Once! They don't even know the rules or understand what the numbers mean. And I certainly am not some sort of holy person. I'm a far cry from a miracle worker, and I barely have the willpower to fight off demons. Especially my own. Which will become a problem very soon. Actually, maybe she isn't looking for a Mr. Right, but a Mrs. Right. Oh, my Marianne, we still love you even if you're in the closet. That would explain some things. Haruna, you don't have a ring anymore. Maybe you two can be together and I don't have to worry about my best girls being alone. What are you on about? Th there's nothing to explain. But the more I deny, the louder they tease until the other people in the pub start to watch. It doesn't help at all when Haruna drapes her arm over my soldiers, shoulders and leads in. Will I be all yours then? Will you be making me feel like a woman? I know they're just kidding around, but this doesn't make me comfortable in the slightest. So when Kamala knows my silence and Haruna sees the expression on my face, they stop. And when the awkward air settles over us, the rest of the pud goes back to whatever they were doing before the whole thing ever happened. They probably won't even remember when they wake up with massive hangovers anyway. Sorry. Me too. Hey, no hard feelings, right? I raise my glass. They smile. We drink. And we die. We're all definitely far too drunk tonight. Eventually, the fun times end. It is a weekday, after all. And with Haruna being a nurse, she still has to get ready for her next shift. Kam also has a loving fiance waiting for her at home, and really didn't have to make a fuss about leaving and really didn't have to make a fuss about having some left some buns in the oven when she took off early. Really, I understand. I was the one who insisted, who was determined to get pissed drunk anyway. Moving to the bar, I sit. Alone at last. Alone with the stranger. Hello, Mr. Wright! I haven't seen him here before, obviously not a regular. He hasn't said a word, and just sits there savoring his drink. With his whiskey served neat in one hand and lighter in the other, it doesn't seem like he's noticed me yet. And maybe I should go before he does look my way. Because he was pretty and he was blonde. And those two things plus alcohol never did me any good. 
A thought too late. Judging by the way he's his face flushed and the day's looks in his eyes, he's as pissed drunk as I am. But whereas I felt like keeling over, he looks like he's still ready to take the catwalk by storm. Really, he just has the air of one of those men who thinks they own the world. Hello there, sexy. Please don't stand up on my account. I already like what I see. I just remembered that when Marianne and Hannah and them got introduced, she asked if they knew her, if they knew each other. Oh no. Oh no, no. Wait, his name's Whiskey? <laughs> Fancy a drink? It'll be on me. But then again, I might be pleasantly surprised if he proves me wrong. Want some between the sheets? Sex on the beach? I'm talking cocktails, of course. Fat chance. But it doesn't matter, we both know how to play this game. And there are two different ways for the night to end. One thing or another is going to happen. The question is, what do I want to do? Oh no, that's fine. I'd rather order some blue balls or some AMF if you don't mind. He looks like he's about to say some witty retort, but stops himself and downs the rest of his whiskey. I order mint julep, he gets another whiskey, and we start the customary small talk. Of course, the saying, ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies, goes without saying. We ask nothing about each other, offering up falsehoods to establish a strenuous, fake connection between two strangers at a pub. A pub, if only to pass the time. Whiskey, as I've come to call him, is supposedly 21 years old, single, takes care of a sick mother, and is manager of some sort. Manager of what? I don't care to listen to the details. Meanwhile, Mint, as he's come to call me, is 29 and I'm... What did I say I was again? Oh yes, I told him I was a professional chocolate taster. Because fuck it, if I'm going to lie about what my job is, might as well make it fun. <laughs> it's a pretty decent chat between two pretty dumb, drunk strangers. I might be drunk considering how much I'm stumbling over my words. Maybe it's just me, but we might as well fucking well... <laughs> Why is reading out loud so hard? And maybe it's just me, but we might as fucking well expend the tiniest amount of effort in pretending there's something meaningful in this meeting. Would have been nice too if it was just left at that. But during a lull in the conversation, he brings it up. You know, I've never been with a woman taller than me. And to think he might have been different from the rest. Never have and never will, Whiskey. Can we go back to the history of chocolates? Did you know that chocolate candy was introduced in 19th century England as a healthier alternative to alcohol? St. Lucy was the most beautiful woman of her time. She had men come from the four corners of the world just to see the pure light of her exquisite green eyes. If she were so lucky, anyway. No, enough of the history lesson. Come on, Mint. You know and I know what you came here for. Though not every suitor was gallant, and she was no fool. She had known that sooner or later, she wouldn't be able to defend her chastity. Come on. There must be something that gets you going. So she had taken out a knife... and gouged out her own eyes. Hmm, there is something. But I don't think you can handle it. Impressed with her devotion, God restored his, her eyes and made them more beautiful than before. He has a peculiar sense of humor, hasn't he? Because that only meant suitors kept going after Lucy, and she kept her eyes in the chalice to scare them away. Oh, I'm pretty sure I can handle whatever it is. Saint Lucy, help me. Help me turn away from sin. Help me with my own blindness. My place isn't too far from here. I won't take care of you if it ends up being too much for you. Oh no, Marianne. And no one will be able to hear you if you try to scream. You sure you want to go down that road, pretty boy? Wouldn't have it any other way. The best thing about having my condo so close to the pub is the ease of access. As long as I can still stand and walk, I can make it home. Maybe I need help from a kind neighbor or two to help me with the last leg if I've really gone overboard with alcohol. But I always made it home. Sometimes, with company. Of course, that always comes with complications, especially the real clingy ones. But it isn't anything a good tip about stalkers to the building security can't fix. I'm always nervous though, even if this isn't the first time I've done this. Man, the first few minutes as we enter the room are the first few agonizing minutes where I try not to panic. Okay, Mac, so far so good. 
Don't let him smell your fear under all that liquid courage. He'll leave sooner or later and I'll never have to see him again, just like every other man before him. I'd like to say to myself that the men I brought to my place were more scared than I was. Yet there's no fear when I look into Whiskey's eyes, only delight. When he starts touching me, I don't even hesitate when I push him against the door. Roughness is to be expected. And as long as he sticks to the script, everything will go smoothly. We'll have our little tumble in the sheets, he'll, he'll leave, we'll forget about it. If somebody asked what I really wanted, I would have told them I wanted a bed of roses, chocolate, music, and maybe an Irish castle. But all I really want is her, and that's never going to be reality. That was my fault, of course. Because I was afraid. Because I was a coward. They would never hold up a candle to her. She was the light of my life. And I'd let her go. I can't even be bothered at the thought of her. Just a single thought of her makes my resolve to see this affair through waver. Wait. Yes, what is it now? What's it going to be, Marianne? To sex or not to sex? <sighs> what do I do here? I'm going... Okay, St. Lucy, help me. Let me deliver Marianne from sin. We're both drunk. And... This is wrong. Don't you think it's a bit fucked up that we're about to have sex and we're just calling each other by the drinks that we had? How messed up are we? Doll, shut up with the ethics and morality talk. It is seriously putting me out of the mood. If you want to leave now, Whiskey, I understand. I mean, with how smashed you are, it'd probably be best for you to sleep the night unless you want to be mugged. But I won't stop you. And this isn't going to happen. Bloody hell. I got the achievement cock blocked. Oh my god. Of course he's annoyed at me for putting off our night of sexual congress. But no means no. And beyond spewing a few profanities under his breath, he surprisingly simmers down soon enough. I was worried for a moment that he might try to force something. Instead, he makes a show of fixing his suit and smoothing down his hair before making himself comfortable in the nearest seat he could find. What are you doing, then? You have a guest in your home. Put the damn kettle on. Dandelion tea, if you have it. But I suppose all you have are those shitty tea bags from the store. Oh my god, Luke. If it isn't for the absurdity of this turn of events, I would have flipped him off for thinking I have no taste. But in the end, I just laugh. All I got are cans of Korean ginseng and lemon balm, though. No dandelion. Without a second thought, I do wet the tea. That's three minutes to get the kettle to a boil. Three minutes where we say nothing to each other. I mean, what do you even say to the guy I was going to sleep with until I changed my mind? I doubt he's in the mood to talk about the influence of Troy's on Mallory. It's still unusual by the time we're both seated on my bed, with mugs of tea in my hand. Just so you know, whatever is going on right now is a lot stranger and fucked up than the one night stand. We are two messed up individuals by your logic. Everything is messed up, if you ask me. War? Terrorism? Famine? Poverty? Loved ones and loved lost? Oh. Okay, now you are really pissed drunk. This whole world is a cesspool. The dead air is telling when it fills the room once more. One would think that this is the perfect time to burst to spill it about whatever issues that made us the fucked up person that we are today. And it is. But I guess some part of me would rather not put the weight of my problems on somebody else's shoulder. It wouldn't be fair to leave that to a person when I don't even know if we'll ever see each other again. Sooner rather than later, we both pass out on my bed, mugs left forgotten on the floor. When I wake, whiskey's already gone. Wow, Marianne. Wow. Honestly, I'm surprised Luke didn't try to force anything while they were asleep. I, I just... I'm really surprised at that. I'm proud of him that he didn't do it. A bottle of painkillers and a note on the table are the only evidence that I wasn't alone last night. Thanks for the tea, Marianne. Whiskey. I don't even question where these are from or just how he knew my real name. I'm just grateful for something to help with the hangover. Might as well. I have a job to do.
is an often I think about drinking on the job. And I wish I could drink on the job too, but unfortunately I have to go. But hey, you know what, Marianne, it's good to have fun. But just don't do that kind of fun. Weirdly enough, Luke actually likes me more that I didn't do that. Weird. That's really weird. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. You have a good day. Goodbye.